when you said, I know what I got it. <laughs> got it. <clears throat> Tonight we're going to study a subject that is in really important. Um, a lot of people study this subject on a regular basis, even unsaved people. Mm. And the subject is um, knowing or recognizing your enemy. Mm. Uh, in football, basketball, really all sports, it is it's one of the most important things. That's true. A lot of coaches will do a lot of research. I'm talking about watching videos. And playing these videos to their 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 players, so that they can learn how to counter the attacks of their opponents. Yeah. Uh, boxers do it. Mm -hmm. uh, all people who are involved in any type of a sport, they do this. And the reason that they do it is because that they want to know what they're up against. And how often do we do that? Turn to First Peter chapter five. First Peter chapter five. <clears throat> Very common verse. I think all of us probably know it by heart, or if we don't, we've at least heard it many times. Um, the verses in chapter five and verse eight. First Peter chapter five. Verse 8, the Bible says this, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Let's pray and then we'll continue. Dear Father, I thank you for your word. I especially thank you for this particular verse in your word. Lord, I do pray that you would... Uh, illuminate our minds and our hearts this evening and Lord help us to learn the things that we need. Each one of us have different needs. Each one of us have different weaknesses and different problems of life and I pray Father that you would help us to clearly see what it is that we need tonight. Lord help me to say only the things that you would have me to say and Father we'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This verse has has words in it that um, that we use sometimes. Then it has some words that we don't use. Um, and when you think of the word sober, most of us think of not drunk, right? right? Well, that is what it means, but it has a much bigger meaning than that. Okay, I looked it up in the dictionary, and it means this: serious. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and of course, when you find someone who is drunk, they're probably not very serious. Uh, marked by circumspection. Okay? And self restraint. Marked by circumspection. Now, circumspection is when you are, you are, are highly motivated to get to your destination, nothing's going to stop you from getting there. People can try to get you get your attention. They can call your name. They can try to trip you up. And it's not going to stop you. You're headed there and you're going to get there no matter what. That's circumspection. You have a destination. Nothing's going to stop you from getting there. Okay? That's what sober means. Marked by circumspection and self-restraint. Yeah. Or self-control. Now, why is this important? I, and I believe that in, when we're talking about being sober, like Peter said, uh, because of our adversary, the devil, it's important that we have self-restraint and self-control because the devil attacks us in our weaknesses. Right. And if you notice, the verse says that he, 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 he seeks us as a roaring lion. Now, if you've ever... Uh, watched it on the History Channel or the the, the 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 channel that has these animals, the Animal Kingdom or whatever, and you've watched a lion and how he attacks his prey. First of all, he's hiding. Okay, he don't sit up on the rock, you know, waving his arms. Here I am, right. run and hide. Here I come. He doesn't do that. He hides. He 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 gets down in tall grass. Right. 
and he waits for the herds of zebra or whatever is coming around to come close and begin grazing, totally unaware of his presence. Then he he watches them. Yeah. And he watches for the weakest one. Right. And then he slowly starts creeping his way towards that weakest one. Then when he gets close enough that he feels he can run that one down, he takes off. And of course, as soon as he jumps up, the whole herd sees him and they leave and they're flying out of the way, but the weak one gets caught. Yeah. He don't go after the strong one. He don't want a big fight. He's just hungry. Yeah. That's how the devil is. Amen. He's just hungry. He don't care who he knocks over and destroys. He just wants to destroy somebody. And the Bible says there in the verse that he is walking about. What that means is he's he's never letting up. Right. Okay? He's he's constantly and by the way, he's diligent too. Yeah. Very diligent. Yeah. You know, the devil doesn't sleep. So he's constantly looking for ways to ruin our lives and to destroy us. Right. Really? Yeah. I mean, when we're sleeping, we're not thinking of anything. We might be dreaming about something, but we're not thinking of anything proactively. Then when we get up, it ain't much different. Mm. when it comes to this Ooh. subject. That's right. We get up in the morning, we go throughout our ritual, you know, we, we get ready, we do our hair, we get dressed, we eat something maybe, and sometimes watch the news or read the paper, I don't know. Hopefully read our Bible. Yeah. By the way, that's part of what we're talking about here tonight anyway. Right, preach. Amen. I mean, we're talking about how to be prepared for the attacks of Satan. He is going to attack. Right. When we don't know. That herd of 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 zebra, they don't know when the when the lions come. They don't even know he's there. Much less when he's going to jump up and take off after them. Mm. We don't know either. Right? I mean, do you know when the next time Satan's going to attack you or how? No. Or what part of your life he's going to come after? No, none of us. We don't know that. I mean, it could happen this evening. Yeah. And by the way, if it does, he's probably been working on it already. Mm-hmm. You know, he watches our eyes. Mm-hmm. When we're out and about and we're looking at things, he notices what catches our attention. Yeah, that's good. For you. And... If that catches our attention often enough, He knows what's going to work mm. on us. Mm. When you're scrolling through Facebook yeah. and you stop, He knows what that is. Yeah. He's looking over your shoulder. When you respond or worse, react mm. to something or someone in a improper way, he catches that and he makes note of that and he says, you know what, I can use this. I'll have a good opportunity to destroy this person with this. That's how he works. <clears throat> now the, the sports teams, they take the time, and quite, quite a bit of time by the way, hours and hours through the season especially in the beginning. And especially when they're getting ready to fight their their big game. Right. They'll spend a whole lot of time at that point. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but I don't want to get ruined. No. I don't want to be destroyed no. by the devil. So then why is it that we don't take the time that the unsaved world takes to win their battles. So he says, be sober. 
Then he says, be vigilant. That means on the alert and watchful. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean that you need to be schizophrenic. Where that you don't want to leave the house without your you know, your gun in your hand and or whatever, but but it does mean you need to be watchful. Yes. On the alert. Again, the devil is going to attack us in our weaknesses. Right. You know what they are. Your you know what your weaknesses are. Mm -hmm. So how can we be on the alert? for the attacks against the devil on our weaknesses. <clears throat> I don't know what your weaknesses are, but I certainly have them. But I want you to think about your weaknesses right now. What are they? What is one of your weaknesses? Don't say it out loud. Okay? What is one of your weaknesses? What is your biggest weakness? That's where the devil is going to attack you. Okay? And again, he knows what it is. He's already done his research. And by the way, he doesn't have to sneak up on us. Right. Because <laughs> we can't see him anyway. Right. He's here. Yeah. He's in your living room. He's in your car. And he's watching. Mm. And he knows. He knows what to use tomorrow. You ever wondered why that person seems to never go away and they're, they're always a pain, they're always an aggravation. Well, that's because the devil knows. He's watched you long enough respond or react to that person. He knows that they're going to get under your skin. They know how to push your button. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so if we're going to be alert and watchful, we have to be prepared for these things. You know, it's it's kind of like I heard a fellow describe the word um, insane like this. To believe that you can continue doing the same thing over and over and yet get different results. That is one definition of insanity. So when you continually go through a a normal thing on a regular basis and it continues to happen the same way over and over and you continue to be aggravated about it <clears throat> try something different in fact let's stop doing what isn't working amen and do something different yeah with an educated guess of course <clears throat> the devil is likely to attack you when you're emotionally or even physically weak, sick. True. You ever notice how you're on more of a, more on edge when you're not feeling good, or when you are struggling with something emotionally? That's when he attacks. He'll also attack you when you're spiritually weak. Yes. In Proverbs twenty-seven seven, the Bible says this. The full soul loatheth or despises a honeycomb, but to the hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet. In other words, sin looks a lot more appealing when there's distance between you and God. True. The closer you get to Him, the less appealing sin becomes. But Tommy and I were talking the other day about this about how that sin and food have a lot of similarities. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you really think about it, he said, he said, you ever notice how the things that are the healthiest for you uh, normally don't taste as good as the things that are the worst? Yeah. And to me, one of the best tasting things I can eat is Oreos and ice cream. And if I can get Oreo ice cream, it's like the top, Right? But we all know that if I tried to live off of Oreo ice cream, I would croak quickly. Yeah. And my health would decline in a hurry, right? We all know that. But if I eat carrots and tomatoes and celery raw, 
I'm going to live longer and live better, but it's not going to taste as good to my mouth. Well, that's the way sin is. And the devil knows that. Yeah. That's why he wants to catch us spiritually hungry. Right. Because when we're spiritually hungry, sin looks good. Mm. It's the Oreo of life. <laughs> that's just the way it is. That's true, preacher. He also attacks us when our biblical knowledge is insufficient. That's true. You ever wondered right in the middle of a problem how to handle that problem and you just no biblical answer really just popped up. That's happened to me before. But you know what else has also happened? There's been times and I know this has happened to each one of you if you've ever read your Bible very often at all. I've read my Bible and I got finished and I walked away thinking I didn't get much from that. I didn't really have a aha moment there. Has that ever happened to you? Yes. Oh yeah. That's okay. Right. Because you didn't need it at that moment, but later on when you're searching in your mind, you're looking for a biblical answer to a problem you're dealing with, the Holy Spirit can use what you read that morning or last week and it pop up. But if you didn't read it, this morning or last week, how can it pop up in your mind? It isn't there. Your brain is like a computer. It can only remember what you've put there. Which is a good reason why we have to be careful what we put there. Amen. So the devil is going to attack us when we're spiritually weak, when we're weak with biblical knowledge. That's why it's important to study His Word on a regular basis. In Proverbs 27, 12, the Bible says this, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Money fraud investigators are trained to recognize the real money so that when the fake money is submitted, a red flag goes up. I don't know this to be a fact, but I'm told that um, these money fraud investigators are taught to only handle real money. And the reason is so that when something that is not real, something that is fake, is put into their hand, they recognize it. This isn't normal. This isn't this isn't right. I need to check this out. That's what Solomon is saying here in Proverbs twenty seven twelve. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and a red flag goes up. And he hides himself. From a distance he can look at a situation and say, you know, this that doesn't look good. I better avoid that. But the simple, they pass on and are punished. In other words, they walk up to the problem and go, hey guys, what's up? And they're over there with their heads down in a little huddle, you know, looking both ways pretty regular. And the simple person can't see that maybe they've got something in their hands that they're not supposed to have. But he doesn't see that. So he plows right into it head first and what's up guys? And he walks over there and seconds later the policeman walks up and they're busted and they're headed to jail. And he has no idea what happened. He didn't have prudence. How many times have you or I walked into a situation where that all of a sudden, in just a short period of time, we look back and go, how in the world did I wind up here? Right. Lack of prudence. Mm -hmm. Does God have the power to give us a little bit of spiritual vision that we can look ahead and say, wait a minute, that don't look good. Yes. I don't need to go over there. I don't need to get involved with that person. I don't need to spend my money on that. Right. 
I don't need to buy this. I don't need to go in this direction because it just doesn't look good. Can't put my finger on it, but it just don't look good. I need to. I need to wait. You ever had that? That's that's prudence. We need that. Once again, because the devil is invisible. He doesn't tell us when he's fixing to strike. He's not going to say a word until he's ready to bite. God knows that, however. He knows when he's fixing to strike. And he knows how to divert our path around it. I want that kind of prudence, don't you? Now remember, we're talking about being sober and being vigilant. Because our enemy, and by the way, our enemy is not our spouse. Our enemy is not our wife, right. our brother, our sister, our son, our daughter, right. not even our neighbor. Right. It's kind of humorous to me um, as I do tree work for people. Some Many times, the, the, the homeowner says, now... <clears throat> don't drop anything in their yard or we're going to have a real problem. Because now that person, you don't want to deal with them. And I'm thinking, okay. And then they tell me stories about how bad they really are and how that they've done this and this and this over the years. And then I drop something in their yard. And then I have to go knock on their door. And I'm expecting a monster to come to the door and the person comes to the door and they look normal. And then they they say, yeah, what can I help you with? Oh, well, I was trimming some trees next door and I dropped a limb in your yard. I just want to get your permission to walk in your yard and get it out. Oh, that's fine, no problem. <laughs> and then sometimes I get a different story. Oh, for him. <laughs> you wouldn't believe what he's done to me, you know, he caught, and then they give me this long story, and I'm thinking, you know, they're really not that bad people, either one of them. Right. Amen. But it happens. Yeah. You know, but your neighbor is not your enemy. Amen. As bad as they may seem, your neighbor is not your enemy. <clears throat> Believe it or not, those people that you have a hard time getting along with, they're not your enemy. In fact, they're on the same side that you're on. Mm, Amen. Your enemy and their enemy is the devil. Right. Now, it could be, it very well could be that that person, and I don't know who that person is in your life that's hard to get along with, that causes you problems, but it could be that they're losing the battle against your enemy. And their enemy. Yeah. Help them. That's good. They're losing the battle. Help them. In whatever way you can. Pray for them. Love them. Show love to them. Amen. Be kind to them. But help them. Yeah. They're losing. Yeah. Okay? <clears throat> if you or I become weak in our Bible study and our close fellowship with God, we become Satan's bullseye. Mm. Remember, when the lion is crouched down looking for which one he's going to attack, which one is he going to attack? The weak, the weak one. The one that's limping. The small one. If we avoid our important quiet time with God, we willingly forfeit the necessary weapons that are so desperately needed to win the battles waged against us. Right. Amen. So here's my question. What are you doing on purpose, like he said, being sober, being vigilant, watchful, 
on the alert. What are you doing on purpose to win the battles against the devil? What are you doing? And how often are you doing it? Good. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because the devil is looking for a great opportunity to destroy you and I. He hates us. He hates God. And it's not really us that He's so hateful against. It's God He wants to attack. The problem is He can't touch Him. So He has to attack who He loves the most, and that's us. And he's doing a pretty good job of it, isn't he? I don't know when the last time you lost a battle. It could have been this afternoon. It could have been yesterday or last week. I don't know. But when you get into an argument with someone, you lost a battle. When you react to someone in a wrong manner, you've lost a battle. When you have yielded to temptation and you've sinned, you lost a battle. When you have quit reading your Bible on a regular basis, you've lost a battle and you're fixing to lose a bigger one. Because you have become that weak person that the devil is looking to destroy. So what are you doing on purpose? to win these battles. It's clear to me from the teaching in God's Word that what we have to do is stay close to God. He can, he can help us in these Amen. battles. He knows about these battles before we do. Amen. He knew about the battles before the devil created the battle. Yes. Certainly He can guide us away from them. All we have to do is Look at the the instructions. All we have to do is obey Him. Study His Word. Ingest it. Dwell on it. And as the Bible puts it, meditate on it. Then when that problem comes up, that battle is waged against us, that temptation drops right in front of us, we've got the strength to fight that battle. Otherwise, the simple pass on and are punished. We will pass on. We will lose the battle and then there's consequences for it. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, I thank You for loving us. Lord, I do thank You for loving us so much that You gave us Your Word to study so that we can be prepared for these battles. And Lord, I pray that You'd help us to be prepared against our enemy, Satan. Lord, I pray that You would help us to begin by studying Your Word like we should, memorizing it, meditating on it, telling others about it, uh, sharing with others what we learn from Your Word. Lord, I thank You for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's turn to page 483. Stand to page 483.